Hey YouTube, here's this 2010 Cadillac CTS. This is the wagon version, as you can see. This is the 3.6 liter version. Sadly, not the CTS V, which is actually the version I like. You can see him back. Very sleek looking wagon. Ooh, has a little bruise up here. That's nasty. Uh. But yeah, let's do a tour of this one. This will be my first ever tour. I think I've done a startup and rev video. I don't recall doing an interior critique. But yeah, here's the interior. Ooh, these seats are firm. You can see the key fob. Let me focus. Old school GM key, which they've been doing for 12 years or so. Old school GM ignition. It's not a gauge sweep. So again, 2010 Cadillac CTS, this one has 14,000 miles on it, and thank goodness the sun is beaming from behind, so there's not going to be an issue with glare this time around. I've been wanting to do a tour of one of these for quite some time. Let me close this door. So let's talk about comfort. This seat is absolutely firm. It is a rock. Not cushiony at all. You can see this padding over here in the, in the center, the, the insert where it's perforated leather. It is just bulging, like your position on the seat of a motorcycle or something. Backrest, not too bolstered either. It does not hug your back at all. Again, this insert here just bulges right out. So even if you reduce the lumbar support on the seats, it's still going to be rather uncomfortable in some cases. Thigh support is on the excellent side though. The seats are rather low to the floor, but still, you can adjust the seat comfortably to give you decent thigh support. So let's talk about interior quality. Dashboard is nicely soft on top, nicely padded, exposed stitching. They did rather well with that. Hmm, is this supposed to flip up or something? Ooh. Ugh. Yuck. You're kidding me. That is just awful. There we go. There we go. Now it's in. Here's the info display. You can see for the radio. Turn it on. Again. Analog clock. Traction control. Hazards. You can see. The rest of the radio controls obviously does have XM and it does seem to have a hard disk drive so you can store music on here and even record. Hmm. Has an aux jack. I'll show you where that is. Climate control. It's this piece right here. Dual zone and you do have separate LCDs to see the temp so only the driver knows his temp and the passenger knows his temp so nobody screws with anyone. Little storage area. Power outlet. You can see. Here's the shifter, feels good in the hand, rubbery. This does have a six speed auto with manual shift mode. Not in love with this metallic color here on this plastic. This does get ugly over time. Cup holders, as you can see, flips up. This area here, nicely soft. Sorry, I'm going back. Even the sides of the center console, slightly padded. So that's not too bad. There's a glove box. Just push it to dislatch. It's quite large. Rather good finish, too. No uneven gaps. Now, moving back to the center console. It is sure footed because it's sitting right on top of the drive shaft channel, so it's rather shallow. So it's not going to jiggle around, and there is your aux jack, USB, and power outlet. Not much storage in there. Look at the brackets here for the armrest. They're rusting. 
Let me focus in. Yeah, that is so sexy. Nice choice of materials, GM. Armrest does not slide forward. It just has dual layers, dual levels, I mean. And here's the second level. Nicely padded on top, and you do have the exposed stitching. Steering wheel, leather wrapped, nicely thick here. Cruise control, hands-free controls, and radio controls. Steering wheel, tilts and telescopes. It is slightly damp, but as soon as you dislatch it, a damn thing just drops. See? Yeah, just drops. You have panel dim, vehicle information, all those other little goodies, and to fluctuate the, the message center here. Here's the wipers, intermittent speed, and headlamps, and fog lamps right there on the turn signal lever. Here's the door panel. Nicely padded on top with the exposed stitching, that's nice. Armrest, even down below. And this is to control the lift gate. You can see how it opened. Let's put it to three quarters and let's see what that leads us to. I'm not exactly sure what that means. I'll have to put it online. Power door locks, window lock, power windows. All windows go down automatically. And both front windows go up and down automatically. Power mirrors, memory seating. Up to two settings. Hood, e-brake latch. Look at this e-brake latch, how it's uneven. You can see. Not very nice. Here's the seating adjustments for the driver's seat. Backrest, lumbar support right there. This headliner, nicely plush. You can get a load of the fit and finish up here. This gap, look back there. You could practically slide your hand there. That side is nicely tight, but that side, yeah, ugly. A pillar is good here on the passenger side, but as soon as you go to the driver, another nice gap right there. Here's a sun visor, nicely plush. Obviously, this one does have the vanity lights outside. Here's the adjustments. Passenger side, same deal. Universal garage door opener, lighting fixtures. Review mirror, also paired with OnStar, and I'm quite sure it dims. You can see a little sensor there. Back seat is just adequate, nothing to go too yay about. It also is so firm like a rock. Your AC. A little colder there, along with the power outlet. Armrest with its cup holders, and you do have access to the cargo area. Very small, but it's there. The seats do fold down. Nice and flat. You can see. And you only have oh shit handles in the back seat. And they are damped. I do not like the seat cover here on the back of the seat. It's that grainy rough plastic General Motors is famous for using. You can see how nicely scratched it is. You can see at the angle. And yeah, thigh support is not going to be too good either because the seats are also rather low to the floor. As you can see, the seat was adjusted to where I liked it and my knee is just pressing against the back seat here. And here's the awful thigh support. My leg is up in the air here so this is not a comfortable back seat by any means. The materials carry over into the back seat when it comes to the door panel. Nothing changes. Everything is the same as up front. Look at the finish of the lights here, the tail lights. It just lifts right up. Well, that's the way it is. <laughs> I do not like that. And the passenger side is just worse. Look at that. It's like it warped up. Well, that's exactly what happened. That's awful. Beautiful job, GM. This is an LED tail light, by the way, so that is going to be so pricey. We need to replace it. 
again, electric lift gate. Cargo area, not too big of a deal when the seats are folded up, but when you fold them down, it's quite cavernous. It's not too bad. A bit narrow, but again, it's not too bad. Spare tire, and that's where the subwoofer to the Bose sound system is, right inside the spare tire. Battery, battery placed back here. So you can see the lid is under there, but this is not my problem. Cargo lights are to the side. Adjustable latches here when you want to strap something down. So yeah, as you can see. I use my middle finger for that. Get the dual exhaust. This quarter panel was painted. It's just wavy, so this car was already involved in an accident. But that has nothing to do with these tail lights because it's like that on the passenger side. There's the front end, has its HIDs, has its fogs down below. just came off. Something came off. What the hell did this come from? I have no idea where the hell does this go. Oh, up there. Beautiful. Well, engine is all covered up. So yeah, not much to see. Cadillacs or GM's 3.6 liter dual overhead can be six. Hood sounded solid when it closed. So let's give this one a good rev. Let me turn off this AC. There we go. Off. Let me back up the car a little bit so that you can grab better exhaust sounds. There's my nano is right under the tire of that Suburban. Yeah. 4K rev limiter. YouTube, that's the 2010 Cadillac CTS wagon. Bum, bum.